Welcome or welcome back. Hopefully this is going to be a relatively short video. What I'll be doing today is I'm going to remove the exhaust headers off of Chris Jr.'s 1982 Ford Mustang GT. We have some old 90s Mac short tube headers and H-pipe on this car. The driver's side over here has developed a pretty bad exhaust leak. The number 7 cylinder primary tube has cracked. And our ever so slight little tick has gotten quite a bit louder now. The exhaust tick has become more of an exhaust knock. It sounds pretty horrible. Um, I realized the other day that the small, tiny little crack has expanded. And it's wrapping like three quarters of way around the weld of the header. So <clears throat> the fear is that if we don't fix it now, that primary tube is going to snap completely off the collector and we're not going to be able to get it back on correctly so i'm going to both headers are pretty rusty they're they're pretty old but i'm going to pull them both off try to repaint them with some high temperature exhaust paint and hope that helps and of course the driver's side i'm going to go ahead and pull off and hopefully i'm going to be able to weld it back together hopefully i can clean off enough rust and I can, there's enough metal left that I can weld it up and it can last a while longer. So, Not joining me is Chris Jr. I just dropped him off at school. This is a weekday and I'm hoping to only have to put the car down for today, maybe tomorrow. I want it back on the road as soon as possible. But if the header can't be fixed, we're going to have a problem. So let's go see what I'm talking about. Spoiler alert. We did not have a cracked header. It turns out I'm a complete idiot. Shocking, I know. Please keep watching. I'm not sure that really shows up on camera. It's hard to maneuver where you can see it. But there's a crack down there. And if you spray some liquid down there, the liquid will blow out of there before it evaporates and dissolves. But it's hard to see, but... We've got a crack down there in that header, and it sounds terrible. Here, let me show you what it sounds like. Oh, and I said it was the number 7, I think. It appears to be the number 8 that is cracking all the way around. Let me see if I can get it to show up. Right in there. So I'm going to see if I can get that fixed. Here is the sound under the car. And here is the sound from in the engine bay. I'm not sure if you're able to pick that up as well on camera as we can in real life. Well, that explains quite a bit. The other day, off camera, we had another misfire. This number five cylinder wasn't firing correctly. And I just realized that when I took the spark plug wire off, the clip was broken. And I noticed the other day, I was actually watching it, and I put the thermometer on this and this cylinder was dead and I actually watched the spark plug wire slowly back itself off the spark plug as the engine was idling but I didn't let it pop all the way off so I didn't see this I stuck it back on there and the cylinder started firing again but we've had an intermittent misfire this would explain a lot the spark plug is the wire is broken so we'll need a new spark plug wire Wow, this is our exhaust gasket. It is very possible that this entire issue is just this cheap piece of crap gasket. And it was already broken in several places. It looks like it, this looks like normal just burn from the heat of the header. And you can see where the, the dark black, where the actual exhaust was, but this was blown out. I didn't tear it on the way out now. I, this was, 
I tore this. This is already this way. And uh, look at that. Pretty sure exhaust was just blown out the top of this. Maybe that's our only issue. And of course, good news, uh, my gaskets have been delayed another day. I ordered them early. And they have not shown up. They are not even supposed to be here tonight. They're now supposed to be here tomorrow. Uh, got some copper exhaust gasket seal I'm thinking about throwing on here and just seeing what happens and hoping for the best. The good news with our little Mac short tube header here is I don't actually think that was the exhaust leak. From the outside of the car at a distance, that looked like it came around. And it looked like it was leaking like crazy, but really, I'm not even sure we could hear that. I'm not even sure that's like any light is coming through that. So the good news is it actually looks structurally sound. I really, really thought we had a leaking header. I might hit that up with a little bit of weld, clean it up, and just tack that up because it does look like it's cracking, but I don't think that's our leak. Pretty sure that's our exhaust leak. Now, three of these look like they're really close on the bottom. You can see the black lines, but that one is definitely leaking. I mean, it comes all the way out. So that's definitely an exhaust leak. So I'm going to try to clean this thing up. I'm going to go ahead and pull the other one. I'm going to go ahead and get some heat resistant paint on it and see if I can have this thing back together soon. I've never been so happy to be wrong. This crack you see, which I really thought from up here was definitely a break in the header that was definitely leaking, appears to be fine. It doesn't go through. I tried flashlights. I tried everything. I tried light transmissions test, and no light passes through it. Uh, I just looked like crap. I could have sworn that was our exhaust leak. I told the boy I was going to have to take the header off and weld it when actually it's just a garbage gasket look at that look how bad that was leaking out that number eight cylinder the bottom of the gasket was just burned out and destroyed that's what's leaking it is not the header itself thank god i'm just gonna paint these here soon just high temp paint and get them back on all right i cleaned up the mating surfaces here on our really old early generation Mac headers and I did notice that this back number eight cylinder the back number eight cylinder has the absolute least amount of mating surface on the bottom and that happens to be where this blew out other than being blackened from blowing out it was actually pretty smooth and in decent shape but there's essentially twice as much gasket mating surface on every single mating surface except this one because from here this curves down and this curves in so I mean that mating surface isn't two millimeters a millimeter and a half it's very very small it's like a ring on a piston small so I'm guessing that was the problem all along I've never been so happy to be wrong about a broken header but I've also never had an exhaust leak like this. I've had short tube headers leak at the collector, at the primary. I've had long tube headers leak. I've had all sorts of stuff, and I've never heard one like this. This thing sounded like a kid putting a baseball card in the spoke of a bicycle. Just grrrr. It got embarrassing. It was louder than the exhaust coming out the back of the car, and it sounded horrible. But hopefully with the new gasket and enough uh, copper gasket seal, I can get this thing to seal up. I'm in the middle of cleaning up the mating surface on the head. I, I got number eight mostly clean. And you can see it was black all the way down well, well onto the head where it was just blowing it off. But also, even the cylinders that were holding strong and weren't leaking, you can see how close they were. That's horrible. You can see the bottom of every single cylinder was about to blow out. So we were about to have four exhaust leaks on this side. All right, I'm going to get this finished cleaning this up. Get it back, or not get it back together, but get this mating surface clean and get the other header off. 
I have absolutely no idea how we didn't have massive exhaust leaks on the passenger side. Uh, these header bolts, six of the eight were hand loose where I didn't need a wrench. This one I haven't touched. It was just backed out that far. And that's a pretty new development because I just checked them here a while back. So uh, maybe we do have some exhaust leaks, but I've never heard anything on this side. I only heard the other side. I guess we'll see here in a second. Um, I'm going to quit playing around with these header bolts and I'm going to get some lock washers. It appears the back cylinder on both headers may have been leaking. This is number four cylinder. Definitely looks like some was coming out of there. Not much, not as bad as the other side. The others seem to have sealed everywhere except maybe the front one, number one. But this is where that, that backed out bolt was. The gasket's actually intact, but it's pretty burned. Uh, we definitely may have had exhaust leaks over here also. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, number four is blown out also completely. Okay, uh, possibly number three. Oof, God, number two, you can see where the black, it goes all the way past the mating surface. So we had exhaust leaks over here, they just weren't very loud. And the other side was so prominent and loud that it drowned them out. So, <clears throat> all right, I well, sure wish my new exhaust gaskets would get here. This header, also salvageable, not horrible. I am going to try my best to get these studs out and buy replacement bolts so I can bolt in both sides. I hate these studs. Putting them back with a stud is a nightmare also. This is the usual culprit on these short tubes for me, but it does not appear it was leaking here on either side, so that's good news. The H-pipe is still holding. All right, now to get those studs. I should have known that no amount of lubrication was going to get that out of there. <sighs> I'll get the drill. No doubt the other side is going to break also. It's showing no signs of giving in. Guess who doesn't have a thing? The thing, the, the thing that does the thing. The thing that makes it go backwards. God, I could, I could be an American politician and win a pretty high office. One of the back out things. I don't have one of the things that'll back this thing out. So the only thing I can really do is keep drilling it out until I thin this out, just stepping up the drill bit piece at a time till I can get this to come apart and then tap the hole and probably do it again. Good times. Hey, just notice that. Is that leaking? Eh, it may be leaking. Hopefully copper gasket seal is going to fix that. I was almost to my goal and about ready to tap and a drill bit broke off inside the header. Oh my God. Can I drill out the drill bit with a drill bit? Let's find out. It turns out that I could not fix my problems with a drill bit. However, I hit it with a really big tap and a really big hammer and the broken drill bit came loose. I think almost some threading in there my camera sucks there's almost some threading in there i think i can tap that maybe good news the first side is done i did finally get it tapped out where it tightly accepts the bolt from the other side so whew, it was resistant and resilient it did not want to go but it finally gave in and I finally got some good threads. And I think that's gonna work. And uh, just one more side to go. Yay. Second verse, same as the first. A little bit louder and a little bit worse. Uh, part two begins. Side number two is done. I definitely took the one, two, skip a few 99100 method to this. Jumped ahead in the timeline and knocked this out a lot quicker by skipping some drill bit sizes. Um, it threads really well. It holds really strong. It is not straight. Uh, so I'm sure that won't cause any problems lining up my H-pipe and getting this thing back on the car. Now, excuse me, I'm already frustrated because I'm hours behind and I still need to go get bolts and get paint. I feel like a complete fool. I completely forgot I had this torch sitting around. 
I didn't think I did. So this would have gone a long way to helping me get the bolts out. Now I'm using it to burn off all the old lube and everything that I can't get off with engine degreaser or anything else. So just burning off old oil and lube and stuff so I can get these things ready to paint. I'm sure glad I found that torch because other than lube from trying to get those bolts out or those studs out and retapping them for bolts these things were just coated in oil from different valve cover leaks and everything else with uh without the torch there's no way paint would have stuck to these things but they're looking pretty good now and just back to normal rusty so uh time to get bolts and then it's get some paint and then it's a waiting game for the gaskets all right, so right after I cut off the last video, my header gaskets arrived. And yes, I bought the cheapest thing humanly possible, which means I'll be doing this job again in a couple of months. But that is future Chris's problem. And future Chris isn't here right now and doesn't care. I've got those. I'm hoping to head off any problems with some ultra copper. I've got my new bolts, all four of which thread fully, completely, fit great. So those taps worked. And then uh, I got some ultra or some high heat ultra semi gloss black rust oleum. It's supposed to be good up to 1200 degrees. So we're going to put that to the test. But I'm going to get these headers hung and start painting. All right. We got a couple of layers of paint on both of these headers. And I know on camera some spots showing up kind of brownish in my lens but i've got at least two coats on the whole thing everything is very much black uh, a couple of spots are drying a little unevenly got some runs i don't care it's just exhaust but uh yep the whole thing is black got every nook every cranny uh got everything as well as i can And I almost forgot about my header bolts. And I managed to find 16 lock washers to put on the header bolts. And I went ahead and just sprayed them all with high temp black. And tomorrow we're gonna go ahead and install all this, but that's it for tonight. It is the next day. The headers and the header bolts and all that are dry. This paint's kinda odd. In some places it dried really flat gray. In other spots, really really glossy shiny black hey i can actually read the mac product code tag now that's cool couldn't read it before but yeah some of them are really flat gray spots some of them are gloss black i have a feeling it won't matter once we heat these things up um probably going to bake most of this paint off and we'll be lucky if it's in the past i've had this high temp paint turn like a patina brown pretty quick so oh well Hey, look who's here today, and look who, look who's out of his cast. He can put on gloves and actually do things. Welcome back. Time to put the gaskets on. We're going to put some uh, ultra copper on the back of it. Use the bolts to pin these to the head and let that cure and dry a little bit until they kind of stick themselves to the head before we try to put the headers on. All right, here's our first gasket in place. I uh, went ahead and put a little extra ultra copper gasket seal on the bottom of the gasket since that's when, where all of them blew out. But we're kind of gluing them to the head and gonna let that cure a little bit, go to the other side. Then we'll come back to this side and put the header on. We're just trying to get it to kind of stick itself in place. All right, our gaskets are partially cured and held into place on the head. Time to put in the header. It's been about two hours. Mother of God, that was the worst header job I've ever done in my life. These little short tubes were nowhere near lined up. I don't know how the number one and the number four primary were half an inch offline from the bolt holes. 
not even close like the bolt holes weren't even visible i got my endoscope my borescope whatever out you couldn't even see the bolt holes uh if you got number one on number four is half an inch off if you got number four on number one is half an inch off just absolute nightmare we screwed up all the ultra copper on the gasket so but we got it on Time to put the spark plugs back in. We had to remove the spark plugs, not because of the header, but because of all the prying we had to do on the header. Absolute nightmare. On to the next side. And the driver's side, the problem child that started all this, was incredibly easy to install. 15, 20 minutes, just done. Went right into place, no real drama, except had to move the oil dipstick. Didn't have to remove any spark plugs. This side just fell into place. No problem whatsoever. And our new H-pipe bolts went in nice and easy and are looking good. And while I'm under here, I'm going to take off this clutch cover. Oh, that bolt is just too, thread, too stripped out. It won't thread really. This is what popped off a few months ago and lodged our clutch open and we couldn't use our clutch. And I thought I'd broken the clutch or the transmission. So I'm just going to take that off. I've run them open before. I'd prefer it be on there, but it is what it is. All right, the H pipe is attached on both sides. Spark plug wires are back on. Spark plugs are in. Vacuum hoses are rehooked up. Oh, uh, yeah, I should probably hook up the battery. That would help a little. But uh, time to fire it up. And uh, at this point, it either leaks or it doesn't. It runs or it doesn't. Just kind of not caring a whole lot at this point. Pretty tired. This little easy job took three times longer than it should have. Before we put this thing on the ground, we're going to fire it up and listen to it. Go ahead and try it, Chris. Keep going. Come on, baby. Pull fuel. There we go. Huh. All right. This is really odd. We're having trouble getting it to start. We didn't touch anything except exhaust. Everything's hooked up. Try it again, Chris. There we go. All right. Well, it's ten times better than it was. All right, we got to let it warm up and heat up and let all this paint. Let all this paint bake off these headers. Let the ultra copper dry. Ooh, I can smell it. Oh, God, that stinks. But, uh, yeah, we might have a slight exhaust leak over here. When, uh, once it's gone through a heat cycle, I'll tighten everything back down. Smoke them if you got them. Not sure how well it's showing up on camera, but the headers are smoking a good bit. Um, I checked, uh, used the thermometer, checked all the cylinders. It seems like every cylinder's firing. It's not idling all that great. But it, it's pulling nice, it's accelerating nice and hard, so we gotta warm these all the way up, bake all the old paint off of them before we really have an idea what's going on. It sounds like we might have an ever so slight leak, maybe down at the H pipe down here. I can't really tell, but. Very slight. It sounds like there's ever so slight ticking on this side, which this is the side that became the problem child. So I'm not really surprised. All right, from back here, the car sounds normal. No more loud ticking. Give it a little gas, Chris. All right. Yep, no more loud knocking ticking from that huge exhaust leak. Sounds pretty normal from the outside at least. You really gotta get close up under the hood to really tell that something might be amiss under here. And it really doesn't sound bad at all. I don't know if you can hear that on camera. Just an ever so slight little ticking like you're tapping your fingernails on something, but I can live with that. 
quiet enough under the hood, you can now hear the comp cams. Fuel pump, manual fuel pump is centric. That whoop, 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 whoop. That little metallic clicking is right in there under the timing cover, which I'll take it. Couldn't even hear that before because everything knocked so loud. Now it's time to go test drive it. Oh, it sounds so much better from the outside. So much quieter. Three hundred and sixty degree walk around. So much quieter. Like I said, quiet enough you can hear that comp cams fuel pump eccentric from out here, which annoys me greatly. Alright, we're in the car. We had to pull down the street a little bit. There's some yard work going on across from our garage. We couldn't hear anything, but it is already night and day difference in here. Just sitting here before, not only do you have the exhaust behind you making normal noise. Up here you would have the tick 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 and then when you accelerated horrible and now all back there again the only thing you can hear from here is that comp cams fuel pump is kind of regretting that and I'm really regretting that I ordered one for my car also as long as it's working it works but makes too much noise for me to be confident in it and uh, most of the paint or most of the extra paint baked off the headers and the smell is mostly gone and they're not smoking anymore and they're still pretty nice looking black so hopefully that paint's gonna hold up but we're gonna go on a real test drive uh, work this thing out and see how it does well not only does it sound like a normal car it's pulling like a normal car your number five spark plug wire cylinder that's nice uh, it's the little things driving on our personal racetrack what's the problem move it go we're doing the speed limit what's wrong with you people move it is crazy the environment in here man we, we had a lot of exhaust coming in here before a lot of just straight just, it's like sucking on a tailpipe that ticking would just get so loud in here and drive us crazy I'm sure the car's still loud it's so much different it's so nice all right well that is it and that is all um, I am happy to have my wrencher back I had to turn my own wrenches there for a little while that sucks I'm used to kicking back holding a camera and making you do all my work for me it sucks having to do my own stuff you glad to be out of that cast all right man a few words as usual that's it folks, this was supposed to be a combination video of um, an intake replacement from going from a single plane intake to a dual plane intake and the header gasket repair or header repair, what we thought was a weld job, but it just couldn't wait anymore. That gasket was so blown out, it was driving us crazy, it sounded terrible, it smelled, so we had to kind of jump ahead and take care of this first so we can take this thing to a car club next week at his school so we're going to Chris's school car club for the end of the year and here in a couple of weeks we'll do the intake manifold swap join us for that thanks later